Celebrate the birth of Jesus together in God's house with God's people, and we just praise God that you're part of that. And we also welcome you and welcome those that are joining us online. We're glad that you tuned in and ask that you'd share uh, this service and comment that you're joining us online so that we know that you're there. And we'd appreciate you sharing it and be able to spread the word throughout uh, your influence that you'd be able to do that as well. So we welcome you here. If you are a first-time guest, we're so glad that you joined us today and were a part and wanted to be a part of what's going on. So uh, we just thank the Lord that you're here and we hope you enjoy the service and God will just minister to you as well. So we're glad that you're here and uh, we'd like you to uh, join in as we worship. If you'd stand up and worship the Lord today.
Scripture reading uh, for uh, Luke 2, 1 through 20, and so it'll be on the screen as we read. Now in those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that a census be taken of all the inhabited earth. This was the first census taken while Canarius was governor of Syria, and everyone was on his way to register for the census, each to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was from the house and family of David, in order to register along with Mary, who was engaged to him and was with child. While they were there, the days were completed for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him in clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for him, them in the inn. In the same region, there were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terribly frightened. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, there has been born for you a Savior who is Christ the Lord. 
This will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. When the angel had gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds began saying to one another, let us go straight to Bethlehem then and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has made known to us. So they came in a hurry and found their way to Mary and Joseph and the baby as he lay in the manger. When they had seen this, they made known the statement which had been told them about this child. And all those who heard, were, heard it wondered at the things which had been told them by the shepherds. Mary treasured all these things, pondering them in her heart. The shepherds went back, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen, just as it had been told them. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to be born and then ultimately suffering down the cross to pay for our sins. And so, Lord, tonight we celebrate his birth because of what it means to us, Lord, that we have a Savior, and Lord, because we're sinners, we need a Savior, and thank you for providing that way for us to get to heaven, and Lord, we pray tonight, Lord, that the celebration would be all about you, our focus would be you, because Lord, it's your birthday, and we want to honor you, we want to praise you, we want to lift you up, magnify you, Lord, because you're worthy of all praise and glory. May you be glorified in this service. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand up and let's continue to worship.
seated. I'm so glad that you've joined us this evening for our Christmas Eve service. It's becoming year after year more and more of a a great gathering time and a great tradition. I know there's a lot going on in our culture, but there's just some things you just got to do. Amen. And one of them is being together with your brothers and sisters in Christ and celebrating one of the most glorious days of all history. The only thing that, the only two other things that I guess would eclipse this, but they all work together, is the crucifixion. That's a dark day, but then the glorious resurrection. Amen. So when we celebrate Christmas, we're looking at the long view. And as we celebrate Christmas, we realize that Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Nancy, if you'll follow through some scriptures, I want to bring up Matthew 4, first of all. Matthew 4, 16, it says, The people which sat in darkness saw great light, and to them which sat in the region and in the shadow of death, light is sprung up. That is one of the most beautiful descriptions of what has happened since Jesus Christ was born in the world. That we talk about the shadow of death and the darkness that so many people sit in. I think, in my own personal opinion, which counts at least to me, is that we're probably sitting in some of the darkest days the world's ever seen. We're seeing the most difficult times. We're seeing death everywhere. We're seeing the shadow of death spring up everywhere. But there's something greater than all these things that keeps us with an attitude that is different than what the rest of the world bears, and that is that we, we know that Jesus Christ came into the earth born of a man. The most magnificent thing that has ever happened. I sent out a Tuesday video blast, at, uh, and I said something here like this, if I remember it correctly, was that we get so intrigued today with the gadgets and the technology and, I mean, the new cars and everything that comes out on them, and every time you turn around, there's some kind of new technology that's that just wowing people. Uh, but listen, there's something more astounding than all those things added together, multiplied times a million. What is more astounding than all those things is that God became a man. And he is the light that is the light of the world. There's a passage in 2 Corinthians 4, 6, which says, God said, let light shine out of darkness. Is the one who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ Jesus. In other words, God has said, here's life, and I'm bringing it to myself through my son, and he is the light of the world. There's another package, passage, 1 Timothy 6, 16. It's, it was, let me go to Psalm 27, 1 first where it talks about God who is light. It says, the Lord is my light and the Lord is my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the defense of my life. Whom shall I dread? So take a step back. As you look around the dreariness and the darkness of the culture around us and the constant, constant fear-mongering that takes place every time you, you sit down in your living room and watch any kind of TV, remember this, that there's someone who is the defense of your life. You don't have to dread. You don't have to fear if you know Christ Jesus the Lord personally because he is the one who chases out the darkness of fear. He's the one who chases out the darkness of, of those things that try to cloud out the light, but he is the light. And here's the glorious thing. As he's been born into the darkness... He's also been born into our hearts. Listen to James 1, 17, where it calls God. Let's go to 1 Timothy now, 6, 16. It talks about God who, is, who dwells in light that's inaccessible. Listen to this. Who alone God is, Jesus is immortal, and who lives in an unapproachable light, whom no one has seen or can see, to him be honor and might glory forever and ever. He's talking about God. There is no darkness in him. There's no shadow with him. I mean, there's not even not even darkness enough for shadows with him. He is absolute light. In fact, James calls him the father of lights. Every good thing bestowed and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the father of lights. You can go to that next slide there. Coming down from the father of lights. Here it says no variation with him, shifting shadows with him. He is the God of all eternity. He is the God of all righteousness. He is the God of might and power. He is the God who spoke life onto the planet in the beginning. And he's the one who brought Jesus Christ, who is the light of the world, ultimately onto that planet. In fact, the Bible tells us that God just spoke and light flooded the universe. It says that in James 1, it said, let there be light and there was light. So God brings light and God gives us light. It's, it's what is ultimately People say, how do you live a life? How do I know what the plan for my life is? How do I know how to live my life? Hey, it all comes back to this Christmas message. Psalm 119, 105 gives us this passage. God's word is a lamp unto my feet and the light for my path. 
So let me put it bluntly. If you ignore God and if you ignore his word, all right, and you ignore the real meaning of what we're talking about with Christmas, then you're ignoring all hope for your own personal life. You're ignoring all, all, all understanding and all peace that can come from knowing God and knowing his word. There's another passage, Psalm 19, 8. The precepts, talking about the word of the Lord, they're right and they give joy to the heart and the commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. You wonder why so many people struggle today and why so many people live in fear and so many people live with such dread and such doubt in their life it's because they have no light. They have no life. They have no instruction. They ignore God's word. Psalms 43 says this. Verse 3, send forth your light and your truth. Let them guide me. Let them bring me to your holy mountain, to the place where you dwell. God's word is light. God himself is light. God's son is light. So when he spoke earlier about the people which sat in darkness have seen a great light, we understand that the source of that light is God himself. Let me ask you, how much of your life is in the light? John the apostle said, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. The way to genuinely enjoy life, the way to really enjoy living in its fullest is first and foremost to have a heart that is surrendered to the God-man, Jesus Christ, who was born on Christmas night. That's where life is, and that's where life is found. If there's anything you walk away from this service tonight with, I hope you walk away with an understanding that direction and light and life and understanding are going to come first and foremost from God, from his word, from his son. You ignore that, you ignore what life really is. Do you have the light of the world? Do you know the light of the world? Are you walking with the light? Are you walking in the light? And is the light dwelling in you and through you? That's where life is, folks. That's the message of Christmas, ultimately, that God came um, to this planet as a man through his son, Jesus Christ. Still God, his son, still, still all God that he could be. You've heard people say, well, Jesus laid aside his glory. No, he did not. He just clothed it in human flesh. He's all man, but he's all God. He was tempted in every way that we are, but without sin. Why did he resist it? Why did he say no to the devil? Why did he say no to sin? Because he knew he had a purpose. That purpose of his birth was to take him to the cross where he would suffer the agonies of the crucifixion and present himself as a faultless, spotless, sinless sacrifice for our sins. God Inhuman. Think about that. That ought to just blow your little mind. All right? That God loved you that much. That God cared for you that much. That the greatest gift of all eternity is that God's given himself to you. It's time, if you have not done so, to give yourself to him. I trust that's happened in your life. If it has not happened, don't let another day pass. Don't let another moment pass until you surrender your heart to Jesus Christ. I preached a sermon years ago called Open the Gift, Stupid. That's the only time my mom would let me use the word in the sermon title. <laughs> Open the, we just can be so ignorant. We can be so blind. We, we really think that somehow God is trying to take something from us. Well, he is our sin, our misery, our pain, our, our sorrows. We think that God's trying to rob us. It's the same old lie that Satan told in the garden to Eve. You has God said, you know, God doesn't want you to be like him. God's holding something out on you. You go ahead and do this. God's not holding anything out on you. And you're missing it all by saying no to him. As again, let me repeat this. I don't know where you are. I hope that as you approach this Christmas season, it's, it's fun to be with family and friends and presents and all the things that come with it and the food. But the most marvelous thing of all, and do not let this this moment where marvel pass you, the most marvelous thing of all is that God clothed himself in humanity and offered himself as a sacrifice for our sins, the greatest gift that's ever been given. You can't get around the glory of John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Well, what, do you, what, what should I do, pastor? You should slow down. Stop making excuses. Recognize that you are a sinner, all right? All of sin. Nobody in this room is without sin, are you? Well, if you would, please, uh, we'll fill up the baptistry and you can stand on the water for us. We'd like to see it. <laughs> no, you're not going to fly around the room. You're not going to walk through the walls. We're all sin. There's no perfection in us. But he who is perfect became me, my sin on the cross, and your sin. 
And he's ready to cleanse you and wash you and forgive you. Open your life and your heart to him. If you haven't done that, it's certainly the time. I think our ushers are going to come at this time with some lighting. and We'll just stand, if you would, with your candles. And the ushers are going to come down the center aisles. And we're going to light these candles. And as they're lighting these candles, we're going to sing another song again. It's one we've even already sung. Probably one of the greatest songs written, I believe. <laughs> to me, there's a lot of great songs about Christmas, but the simplest are the most beautiful. And the simplest one that we've sung is obviously Silent Night. But you think about that Silent Night, I want you to remember. Just give me a little more good turn to monitor, would you? Just remember that Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Turn this mic on too. Thank you. Check, check. Work again. There we go. Remember that Jesus Christ is the light that came into the world. As we pass this around and we sing this song together, let's just sing worshipfully. This song was written 202 years ago, by the way. Joseph Moore, Franz Gruber, in a little town in Germany. It was written in the wake of terrible Napoleonic Wars. It was one of those rare times that there was peace in this village. And that Franz Gruber wrote the lyrics and Joseph Moore wrote the melodies to it. And I think they shared the song. But think about the, how difficult the world was going on at a time like that. There had been even a flood in the community. It's a, the organ had been drowned out in the flood. And so this song was literally written originally on a guitar and performed the very first time in a service on the guitar, just without the organ. It's a beautiful song. Let's sing it together. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, brown young virgin. Just praise the Lord right here. Let's just bow our heads. I would say if you've never trusted Jesus Christ, what better time, what better season, what better moment than a time when we've gathered together to celebrate the birth of our King and our Lord and our Savior. I would ask you just to pray a simple prayer. If he's never come into your life, 
or maybe you're just living in doubts all the time, settle it right now. Say, dear Heavenly Father, come into my heart. Save me from my sin. Wash me and make me a new person. Forgive me ever sin that I've ever committed in my life or ever will commit. Make me a new person tonight. For Christians, maybe just a prayer of renewal. Take a moment to thank God for his love. Just in your own heart. Thank God for his mercy. Precious Lord Jesus, what a mighty God we serve. What a loving Savior. Father, we bless your name tonight, and if we've gathered here to celebrate the precious name of Jesus, we can hardly find the words to say thank you for such an incredible, marvelous, and wonderful gift that you've given that in your son is life, and in your son is salvation, and in your son is eternity. That we can see your mercy, your gentleness, your kindness through his light and his life. Help us, to, Lord, to remember that we have peace during this time of chaos because we know you. That we don't have to fear the world, pandemics, disease, or even death. Because you've made us new people. And you have made us for eternity. So we thank you in Jesus' name. Your great blessing. And everybody said, you gently blow the candles out. Oh, come, let us adore. the person beside you and say, Merry Christmas. Try the other side now, say Merry Christmas. Thank you for being here tonight and being a part of our service. Be safe. Love people this weekend, this week, and make sure you tell everybody around you, hey, Merry Christmas. <laughs> Amen. Let's bring back Christ to Christmas again. God bless you and thank you for being here tonight. Amen. We are receiving a Christmas offering. There's receptacles at the exit. All those monies that come in for the Christmas offering, unless otherwise noted, will be towards our Christmas mission offering. Amen. God bless you. Thank you.